Hey guys, so today I just wanted to talk about dangers in skincare products that we use every day and uh, specifically a few that I'm going to talk about here. But uh, the first one, uh, these are just dangers in overall general skincare products that most people use or have used at one point. So uh, the first one I want to talk about is, in my opinion, one of the more important ones, retinol and your eyes. There's a lot of retinol eye creams out there, a lot of them, which generally pretty safe but uh, vitamin A can be very beneficial for some tissues of the eye but very detrimental to others such as the malebian ma ma glands which do not like vitamin A and they're very sensitive to uh, any vitamin A that gets in the eyes and those glands are the ones that secrete oils and tears the film that covers our eyes which are very important to maintain a healthy eye and a and a normal hydrated eye but uh, for some people if those glands get very exposed to retinol especially over time it can really lead to dry eye condition which uh, in a lot of people is irreversible once it happens um, and really is irritating I actually have dry eyes but um, I don't think it's from retinol I think it's from something else which I'll talk about next but uh, isotretinin alters the structure and function of those glands, which promotes dysfunction and evaporative dry eye, and even in low concentrations of uh, isotretinin. So keep that in mind when you're using it. Keep it away from your eye. And if you notice that your eyes start to get dry, something to think about. I'll link to an article about it that discusses it more. But uh, anyway, once those glands are damaged, it's very hard for them to start functioning again. So it's something to think about if you use retinol. If you notice you have dry eyes, one thing to think about and maybe discuss with um, your healthcare provider or your eye doctor. Next up, uh, this is something I had to give up, uh, lash serums. Not all of them, but ones that contain prostaglandin analogs, which are the ones that give you rapid growth in your eyes. Um, so actually Latisse is one of those, Babe Lash, New Lash, Grand Lash, there's a lot of them. But uh, Biopros, which is the active ingredient, uh, it helps your lashes grow longer before they fall out. So you get very long lashes, which is uh, Latisse's uh, prescription, but there's many over-the-counter ones nowadays. And uh, there's a lot of side effects with it and start noticing it. But darkening of the iris, so if you have blue eyes, they start to get darker, which is permanent. There's nothing as far as I know that they've been able to do to fix it. Um, diminished orbital fat loss so your eyes look more sunken in and then also um, dryness of your eyes the drug triggers an inflammatory response which um, the body's natural secretions telling them to thicken and causes chronic dry eye disease um, which is another one very hard to turn back and i think it's the same glands with the retinol so uh, if you use bay lash new lash lash boost grand lash and you start to notice dry eyes discontinue it immediately because once it starts, it is so hard to get it back to a normal, healthy function of the eye. So um, that is something to think about. Uh, next up, unpreserved cosmetics and bacteria. I, I've noticed it with certain brands, a few brands specifically, uh, Youth to the People, Herbivore, um, Glow Recipe. Some of these brands have had complaints of bacteria in their products. They're not responsible for what I'm going to talk about, but... There are uh, some cases of people dying because of a uh, certain lotion that was used, didn't have enough preservatives, and microbes grew in. Actually, this was in a hospital. They did studies on several people, and uh, people started in one hospital getting more infections, and they traced it back to this lotion, which was just a Petri dish growing uh, crazy. And especially with a lot of the preservatives that are out there today being demonized, and brands don't even feel like they can use them anymore. Parabens, phthalates, things like that. Um, brands don't even feel like they can use them anymore without people getting upset. So they re rely on less and less preservatives or one preservative to do it all. And uh, some brands don't even use any preservatives. I will say I've noticed a lot of the Youth to the People products um, end up, I use them once or twice and then they go bad. They either get mildew or uh, I notice them just a dried clump at the bottom. Uh, Glow Recipes uh, Blueberry Cleansers had a few people complain about mold and mildew and things like that. So um, skincare products, side effects uh, have been an issue. Um, so there was a patient that was at a clinic to get a uh, surgery 
and they were doing a shave of them and the shampoo that they used before the shave was contaminated with Pseudomus arginosa, which is a gram-negative bacteria found in water, soil, and even skin flora. The shampoo caused severe infection with one fatal case. So it's very important. Uh, if you don't use cosmetics that contain preservatives, use them right away. Don't let them sit at all. Or pick something with preservatives, even if they're bad mouth, it's better than um, getting some really bad bacterial infection in yourself. So I'll link to this below as well. Another danger, this is not as big of a deal now, but uh, for a while, the keratin protein, the strand, lay, hair straightened uh, processors uh, was a big deal. A lot of people would do like keratin treatments where it would help straighten their hair and strengthen it. But a lot of these hair strengthers um, contained formaldehyde, which is a carcinogen, and the levels were found were very low, only which... It's low, which is not a big deal if you're only doing it once or twice a year, but if you're a stylist doing it day in and day out, or if you're somebody that gets it done regularly, it becomes more of a concern. So something to keep in mind. I guess I'd rather not have straight hair and not have the formaldehyde exposure if I can help it. Um, another thing, laser damage. Uh, there's actually become an entire subreddit, uh, laser damage support, which is a subreddit to people who have experienced damage from professional laser treatments. Um, their skin barrier not healing, something called laser-induced rosacea, damage from IPL, fat loss. Some people have gotten um, reactive allergic skin, which their skin reacts in a, like an allergic way to almost every new product. And people just started noticing this after certain uh, in-office treatments with professional lasers. So thankfully, I'm too cheap to have done any of it, but it sounds like there are quite a few people that have had uh, some issues with these and in the long run it takes them a long time to heal so something to think about probably not going to happen to everybody but if you're one of the few that it does happen to it's not fun uh microneedling microneedling uh became kind of big in the last few years and i've seen a lot of great before and afters for microneedling i've also seen several before and afters where they look perfect before and after the microneedle it just looks awful i was trying to find the photo of this one gal but I mean, if one speck of bacteria gets on one of your little needles, it's going to spread it into your entire face and cause an entire acne breakout rash. I mean, the, it's going to take a long time to heal. So if you're doing it at home, don't buy any other microneedle except for it's sealed. And the other thing I want to point out is it's impossible to actually sterilize a microneedle at home. It's, it's impossible. You can disinfect it, but to actually make it sterile, once it's out of this, it's not going to be sterile. And a lot of companies that make them. I mean, I see them sold at Marshalls and TJ Maxx, like halfway hanging open on the shelves. And it just, you know, you're cutting yourself hundreds of times with a microneedle. So if there's one speck of bacteria on there, it's going to go into every single little puncture hundreds of times and just damage your entire face. So if you're going to do it at home, just be very cautious. You have to clean your face first, clean hands, clean microneedle. Don't reuse them several times. And just remember, it's impossible. They're not going to be sterile once you open them. So something to think about. And then one other thing. Uh, it's not been as common lately, but uh, a few years ago, it was huge where the FDA investigated a lot of imported skin creams and found high levels of mercury in them. And actually, a lot of these creams were ones that were uh, from other countries, um, China being one of them, uh, the FDA also says products you purchase from uh, Middle Eastern markets, uh, they're, that these creams are based primarily for skin lightening, so skin bleaching as well. Uh, and they contain high levels of mercury. So if you're using a skin lightening cream that's imported, as the FDA says, from China, India, Mexico, or some other exotic locale, check for mercury and be aware the ingredient list might not list mercury. They might list it as Mercurous chlor chloride, calomel, mercuric, or mercurial. And if there's no ingredient list, don't use the product. So that's what the FDA says. That was a few years ago, uh, probably about five or six years ago, but uh, is it probably still our problem that ones out there. But the FDA saw a lot of people complaining uh, years ago for lots of issues. And mercury, not good in any amount. So um, anyway, these are dangers in your everyday skincare products. Just think about it. I mean... You think it as a topical, no big deal, but, you know, these ingredients get into your eyes, your mouth, your nose, cuts, 
So it's important to be very conscientious about what you use, where you use it from, how you use it. So even, even in an esthetician's office, things can go wrong with the laser thing. So anyway, those are my thoughts today. If you have any comments or thoughts or any experiences with any of these, definitely leave a comment. Love hearing from you guys and stay tuned for more tomorrow. Thank you so much. Bye guys.